New toys today. This is the Fuse Blast, and normally this is used for your SLS prints to get cleaned up, um, but we're using it for a couple of different things because we actually have two of them. There's one in the box right here that hasn't been unboxed, and then there's the one right here that has been unboxed uh, and is being set up right now. So we're using it for two different things. Number one, we're using it for its normal purpose, which is to clean up the SLS printed parts. Um, there's going to be the, the flag driver, the torque driver. So those, we're gonna be printing thousands of those. So it needs, we need an easy way to clean those parts up. And then we're also going to be using it for bead blasting all of the titanium parts, which isn't a normal use case for this machine, but it seems like perfect use case for this machine. Form Labs warned us that um, if we run into problems, it's not their fault because it wasn't designed for that, but at the same time, they're interested in finding out how it works out. Come look at this machine. You can see what it is, is that it's basically a bead blaster, like a sand blaster with a drum. So you take all your parts, you throw them into the drum, you close the machine, you hit go, and it automatically bead blasts or sand blasts whatever is in that drum. In our case, it's going to be Smith blades. So we need to get air to them and power to them. And uh, on this mezzanine, we have neither right now. We barely even have lights. We have our lights on the floor. Work in progress. Got another machine yesterday and we got the, the Mr. Cool units yesterday. So those are gonna be um, being installed. Let's go to the tent. I'll show you what's going on in the tent. I wanna say that there's, there's five machines showing up next week that'll go in the tents and then another seven kind of sprinkled out after that. But we're, we're almost done the infrastructure in the tents. It's fully insulated, it's fully powered. The next things we need to do is HVAC, which is what Mr. Cool is doing here, and then getting power to each of the machines. So these are the Mr. Cool units. They're, each of them are three tons. Um, which means 36,000 BTU. They're fantastic because you just, you, you install it all yourself. They're quick connect fittings. Um, you saw maybe in the, either earlier in this vlog or in the last vlog that I had a tech in and he was soldering together the lines. I, I haven't received the bill for that yet, but it's not gonna be pretty. So these ones, you just quick connect. You just plug them in. It's great. So I'm gonna do all this, uh, all this stuff myself instead of paying $150 an hour for a tech to do it for me. The other thing that's happening in here today is the wire tracks we're standing on right now. We've got this Unistrut right here, and we're gonna put this about 10 feet up and go from wall to wall and put this mesh underneath so that we can run all of our, our wires, our plumbing, um, all that stuff will be... That's why we... That's why we wear safety shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so loud. These are gonna span across over top of the machines and then the wires and the plumbing can drop down into each machine. So that's what's happening here today because next week machines show up. So we don't have very much time to get all of this stuff done. We're racing on both ends of I'm pushing my suppliers to get me machines and tools and all of the parts to go as fast as they possibly can to get me the stuff. Uh, for example, Haas has, I have two full production lines running for me and only for me. And they wouldn't confirm this, but I'm pretty confident they have bumped other customers so that I can get machines sooner. But at the same time, I need to get all the, all the infrastructure here finished so that when the machines show up, they can start running immediately. Okay, rough, sorry, sorry Mike, I'm in your way. Come on, man, gotta um, get done here. Yeah. It feels like every day there's 10 more people, 10 more machines. It's getting real very quickly. Very excited to see all of the machines in here purring away, making, making Smith knives, Smith blades, sorry. Open it up. There it is. What a nice looking compressor. A little bit of background here. Um, Best Cutter, they, they make a bunch of things, but we're getting 
a laser cutter from them and we were touring their their shop uh, they had this compressor i needed a compressor i was like hey i need a compressor things got busy they just gave me a compressor i haven't paid for it yet it's the one that they had in stock was a 20 horsepower goes through a coupler into the compressor uh, again this is variable speed so it can uh, it can ramp to what it actually needs instead of going full on and full off there's radiator up here to keep it cold um, the tank is underneath and then it goes through it goes through an air dryer first to keep everything uh, all the air dry to keep the moisture out of the lines the other piece of the puzzle is that this can run at a higher pressure. Come see the laser cutter. This is our old laser cutter. We're getting rid of this laser cutter because it's it's too big. It's a pain to use this one. We're getting the best cutter, laser cutter. It's gonna be smaller, it's gonna be more powerful. And then with that compressor, we can get rid of all of the nitrogen tanks. Instead of running it on net nitrogen, we'll run it off the compressor. I mean, air is mostly nitrogen anyways. It works pretty good. So, where do we put the compressor is the question. The decision is to put it right next to the original one. It'll make it easy to plumb in. It'll be relatively easy to power. We're gonna bring it in, plug it in, and see how it sounds. Daryl, what are you doing? Uh, my soft keyboard hands. I can't ruin them. There we go. Very elegant solution, Ian. <laughs> Look at that color of it. Oh. You sad to see the laser go? We're getting a better, smaller laser, but I'm sad to see this one go because we won't, we won't have in-house laser capability for a little bit. It's one way to do it. It's not the way I would do it. Their machine now, not my problem. We did it! Yippee! Yay! No longer our problem! Wow! So much room for activities! I like how we painted as, as best as we could. Yeah, it's fine. I'll be in that type. Yeah, so uh, that's the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, careful, 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 careful. I fulfilled my dream of becoming a wacky inflatable. Oh. Ah. Yeah, it's more of a chimney sweep, if I'm being honest. You have nobody to blame but yourself on that one. So since the Smith Blade is made here in Canada, I got this big Canadian flag, and it's eight by five feet. But it's not big enough, so I got a bigger one. Like, that's actually heavy. This thing is huge. It's too damn big. We might have to pin down the bottom corners. Okay, nice, nice. We're the thunder on the time, aren't we? Another one. Steering bit squirrely around seventy-five. <laughs> Watch it noggin. Yeah, that's uh, that's the big one. How's that look? Looks good. Does it need to be that large? So if anybody's wondering, we're Canadian. Oh, light don't come.